Okay. Smile big, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello, hello. And glad to have you aboard here for our webinar here called Best Times to Trade Forex and How to Win Big with Forex Trading in Under 20 Minutes Without Losing Your Bank Account. And I'm so happy and excited that you guys decided to come in the evening. This is kind of new, uh, being able to do a webinar in the evening. And so I uh, wanted this to test that out and see how many people will actually show up. I know it's like 1 a.m. or so uh, in the in the European uh, area. But I know a lot of the U.S. people are at work or uh, during lunch and things like that when the, the European session is more like in the evening time. So we're going to try 9 p.m. and see um, how that works out. And we're going to be doing a series of webinars based on a, um, a survey that you guys took a, uh, a while ago. But it was uh, pick the top 10 issues that you um, had um, uh, when trading. And I'm so excited to really uh, talk about this. But, you know, the, and this was one of the top ones. In fact, it was the top one. And I was really shocked because usually it's about entries and exits. Usually it's about um, um, uh, uh, you know, strategy or you know, money management or psychology. And those things ranked really low compared to this topic. And so to give you guys what you wanted, what you asked for, this is what I put together for you. So uh, we have a really great webinar uh, uh, for you. And uh, if you have we're a little Q&A at the end, so you can ask any questions that you may have about what's going on and, um, and know about maybe particular trades or setups or things like that. So uh, if you hold your questions at the end, in fact, you can just type them in the chat box. You can, if you have a question, burning question right now, pop it in the chat box right now. And that way, because I know sometimes you're like in these webinars and things, like, oh, I have a question. And then at the end, oh, I forgot. So feel free to type in the question. And uh, I have the chat box open. And so if you have a question um, um, or comment or a suggestion or something, uh, this is kind of an audience participata participation. I want to get you involved. Because I tell you what, we, when I teach my Elite Traders University uh, for my, elite, for my uh, clients, um, I tell them that they have to get involved. This is not a French mud bath where we just rape you over with mud and you just take it in. Uh, you're going to remember about 70 to 80 percent of the information that you're involved in. So either saying, yeah, I agree, no, yeah, okay, just respond sometime in the chat box. So if you can't hear me, uh, let's start with the, let's start with some participation right now. Type the letter Y in the chat box if you can hear me. So let's do an audience participation, okay? And that way uh, you'll be able to. Um, um, and memorize and hold on to the information a lot more because um, uh, that's the kind of the dirty little trick for lectures, webinars, and corporate trainings is you do a lecture and everyone will forget like 80% of what they learned the first hour because they weren't involved. And then they, guess what? They try to work with 3% of the information that they supposedly learned and then they have to call in for training again and training again and training again. And that's like two, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars a shot. Right, so that's why when I do mentorship, I get people involved so they you know, necessarily have to come back. <laughs> okay, well let's go ahead and get to to the presentation at hand. And let me turn off the camera. I just wanted to let you see my face and say hello to all you guys and go in here. Let's turn, Mark. You save the day, man. You are the hero because uh, I've done presentations where no one says anything. When's when's the webinar going to start? And we're like 40 minutes into it. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Hero, man. I owe you one. Okay, let's get to, to it. Uh, this is the webinar, Best Times to Trade Forex and How to Win Big with Forex Trading in Under 20 Minutes Without Losing Your Bank Account. Now, this is not just for short-term scalpers or traders, which I'm known for, but it's also um, for people who maybe have, will have a longer-term approach. you got a job. You can't be a, a screen jockey sitting in front of this thing all day long. you got a life. you got a business. you you got kids, you got family, you got all this stuff going on, but you want to be part of the forex. So this is kind of showing not just the best times of the day to trade, but the best times of the week to trade, the best times of the year to trade, okay? And uh, there's because there's cyclical patterns, and we're coming up on a big cyclical pattern right now, like in the next five days. So that's why I wanted to launch this webinar right now. So why are you waiting so late, Greg? Because really, the summer is kind of shopping and liquid, and I'll talk to you about that in a little bit more. Okay. First of all, let's go ahead and do take care of the housekeeping here. And I want to uh, point your attention to the risk disclosure on your screen and make sure you understand all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading. 
Okay, and a little bit about myself, if you have not met me or know me, uh, I am the founder and CEO of the Elite Traders University, and uh, we're a division of Greg McLeod Research Analytics, or GMRA LLC, and um, so I'm a 20-year tra 21 year trading veteran and trader mentor. I traded options, features, stocks, and forex. If it has a chart, I have traded with it, and I'm probably one of the foremost authorities of short-term day trading and scalping. Scalping. I was scalping live in front of audiences for FXCM, Daily FX, and uh, for uh, for many, many years, the Pip and Run show, if you guys remember that, and that was the first one where I would actually take live trades on the market, and we had 600, 700 people in the room scalping along with me. We're going to bring that back uh, for uh, for special for special guests, so that's uh, looking forward to that. Um, and also, I spent eight years as like, a currency analyst and trader coach at the, one, of the, one of the largest retail forex companies in the world. And, and, and what that means for you, I also this is an instructor in public education, high school, junior high school, and I worked at a prop training desk and a top tier bank. And all this is all this gobbledygook. What does it mean to you? And it just means this: that um, not only do I know uh, my stuff, I also know how to teach it. Because I've been a, uh, I, I've learned all the strategies and things for teaching students of any age, uh, from um, from elementary school all the way up until like senior adult school, and I've also did adjunct professorship at UCLA. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at teaching, uh, because uh, you want to be able to have someone that can break it down for you. And so if I'm going too fast, or let's say you're going too fast, or too complicated, break it down. I break it down so you can understand. Okay. So let's get to the, the topic at hand. And the, what's the objective here? And this, the objective of this is, well, learn which days of the week, times of the day, and which are the best for short-term day trading scalping, but not only for that, for swing and position trade scalp, uh, trading as well. And in fact, I have about four or five people who are multimillionaires who have moved, who have diversified from scalping. They started off scalpers, and they've actually, they're doing long-term trends. They're taking my exact same scalping pip and run strategy, which I train in my Elite Traders University course, and they've applied it to longer term. Once they scalp that account up to a certain amount, then they're just kind of like an autopilot doing other things with their life, but um, still taking advantage of the Forex. And uh, also, if you stay to the end, I've got a special offer, a very, very, very special offer. Uh, I have a new uh, club called the Learn uh, Learn and Earn Club, in which we have uh, traders I've trained as well as traders, um, professional uh, other professional traders who are doing about you know thirty, forty, fifty, sixty percent per month. Um, and so what happens is you can be able to you know, open up a trading account at one of my partners, and then you can put part of the money for self-directed trading, okay, while you learn, and you can put part of it with this uh, with our trading team. And uh, you can be able to take advantage of that uh, of that as well. And there's, there's like a channel of different traders you can choose from to create your own portfolio. So if you don't have any time to trade and you don't have any time, but you want to have some learning alongside while you're earning, that's something I'm going to offer you uh, an opportunity. It's a private club, and I'll give you an opportunity if you want to like. But that's, that, if you don't want to, that's fine. It's cool. Okay. All right. Let's get to the topic. Ugh. Ah, this is my favorite topic. Uh, it's really not really my favorite topic. I want to tell you what, the only reason I chose this topic is because you guys chose that topic. You know, in fact, you know, I, I did the survey, and I, I mentioned it earlier before we started the recording, that we had a, a survey of people, uh, you know, I did a survey a while ago, if you guys remember that, and I said, oh, what is the number one issue that you guys had in trading? And I thought, oh, it's going to be like, MACD, stochastics, divergence, or something like that, right? No, it was not. It was actually about trading times. I, like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like going, well, you guys, and many of you know it. You, may, you know MACD, like the back of your hand, you know stochastics, you know moving average, you know these things. You just, and the thing about it is, how many of you ever, like, missed a trade because you fell asleep, okay, or didn't take a profit because you, um, you know, you, you, you fell asleep, and you missed it, or you've been sitting up all night waiting for like the Easter money to come, you know, or, or, or Santa Claus to come down the chimney. That's what I think forex is like. I remember it's like Charlie Brown, uh, like you uh, know, uh, like you know, Sally and Linus are waiting in the pumpkin patch, waiting for the great pumpkin to come, right? And everyone else is getting the candy and stuff, and you're waiting, waiting, waiting during the Asia session, and then you know, they fall asleep and, you know, they miss the great pumpkin. But there is no great pumpkin, right? But, uh, and that's how the Asia session can be. So I take the survey and the number, uh, 
actually, uh, it, like, this is in order, this number three, but 38 people, 38 resp uh, respondents, because they had to pick 10, 10 of these, and it, it, the best times to trade was like number one, number two was what are the best days to trade, and number three was like, you know, uh, what, what are the best, the, the most liquid pairs to trade. So everything dealt with time to trade, time of day to trade, time of the year or the month to trade, and the rest of them were like very small. So this was based on a a scientific survey that I made. Okay, so let's get right to it. So what are the best hours to trade? Okay, the trading day is divided into three major sessions. We're going to start with the short term, okay? And many of you know it. At, at Tokyo, there's the New York session and the London. Now, we lump the Australia session, you know, and, we, and the New Zealand. New Zealand is really where it starts, but it's very liquid. That's the, um, the Wellington, New Zealand. That's where the Forex day officially starts. You know, and uh, I remember when I first started trading, I was like, yeah, it's, it's Sunday, let's start trading. And it's like, okay. And then whipsaw, right? So uh, you got this Tokyo, uh, the Tokyo session, we, we kind of lumped together. That's where the volume comes in when we have Australia, Tokyo. And some people call it the Sydney session, okay? So, um, but anyway, those are the, the three major sessions. You got to keep that in mind. Now, um, now, now, Forex is a, now, people have said Forex is a 24-hour, six-day-a-week market. You guys have heard that, right? Let me know in the chat box. You've heard that, right? It's 24 hours, right? Um, you know, let, me, let me know in the chat box. Have you, have you heard that? Is, that? is that one of the reasons why you were attracted to Forex? Yes. Tell me, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. yeah, you heard that, right? But you know, well, theoretically, yes, you can place a trade 24 hours a day, Sunday evening through Friday, but... There are days of the week and times of the, you know, there, uh, there are times of the day that are not best for trading. There are times of the year which are not best for trading. In fact, avoiding these times and days can radically improve your trading performance. Radically. I mean, seriously. Okay? Um, and I'll tell you more about that uh, later. Okay? With some, with some examples, with some statistics, with some verified evidence to show you that, yeah, you know, there, uh, there's a higher probability, you know, and we want an edge. We want our edge, and we want to trade when it's the best time to trade, okay? So, I mean, signal trading sessions are created equal, ladies and gentlemen. You know, some sessions can put traders to sleep. Look at these guys. Look, 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 look. You see this? This is a currency desk in Tokyo. They are asleep, Okay. Now, if you've been in the Asia session, that's, you know, how many people have tried to trade in Asia? Anybody making big pips in Asia? Big Asia traders in here? Let me know in the chat box, okay? But it can be like watching paint grow and grass peel, okay? Yeah, you trade Asia? Yeah, to me, I know you, uh, you do. You're part of my group. I've seen you do it. Yeah, yeah. I live in Bali, so, mm hmm Now, oh, yeah, you, see, you live in Bali, Mark. Dude, you're already there. I mean, like, what, 3 p.m., 4 p.m., London market's open? So, you know, you know, I have trading indie right there, you know? See? Yeah, exactly. My, I have, we have students, Henny and Garth. They live in Australia. And, uh, you know, 4 o'clock in the afternoon is London. So it's, like, easy. You know, but it's not so easy if you live in California, right? Okay, but anyway, I, I digress. Let's get, let me go. Okay, now, now, while other sessions are just filled with highly volatile prices, now, just a little disclaimer about Asia. If there is a big Chinese announcement or a big Aussie Ray announcement or there's something going on um, in, like, a Bank, a Bank of Japan announcement, you are going to have L.A., my friend. Momon, how you doing? <laughs> I'm a native L.A. person. Go, go Dodgers, right? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so the great thing about this is, uh, you know, you, you, you agree, you, if you, it depends on where you live. No, really, I'm really focused on my West Coast people. I have love for my West Coast people because I live in the West Coast, and it was very difficult. Uh, you no, know, trade the Asia is, okay, great, 5 p.m. or something like that, but nothing's moving, right? Nothing's moving until, like, 1 o'clock in the morning, okay? Um, now, uh, like I say, if there's a big move, a big economic announcement, then all bets are off. Uh, Asia can be very liquid. In fact, um, based on the 
average daily range of a currency pair, if the average daily range is 100, and you get 60, 70 pip move during Asia, what will happen is New York will be flat. London will be flat. Because was, it's like a runner. Big, a runner just runs, runs, runs. I know when I was in PE, I was a kind of a fat kid. So when I ran, I walked and ran. You know, I could, like, keep going, right? And that's how the market is. It runs, and it sprints up in a big, big impulse move, and then it's going to walk. And if you wake up in the morning and you see, oh, big move in Asia, that's why my checklist, I always say, check the Asia session. If the Asia session ate, uh, ate up a big part of the ATR, you're mildly hanging up. You're probably not going to get a whole lot of pips. You know, you might be just small time scalping three or four you know, pips because uh, uh, the, the, the people are taking their profit. They're taking profit. So it all depends on what's going on at, at the calendar. You want to take a look at the, uh, the, the uh, maybe like a Forex factory calendar. But that, that's, that's my disclaimer for Asia. But nine times out of ten, it's going to be flat. Okay. Uh, aside from a big announcement. Now, now other sessions are usually m likely with more more volatile price action, okay? And you're going to find a lion's share of pips during that, okay? So, okay. So, so what is the best time to trade? You let me know. You, 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 some of you may already know the answer already. You guys are a smart group. You showed up to this webinar at 9 p.m. I, uh, I applaud you. Yeah, you guys are awesome. And you're responding, and you're getting involved, and I think you guys are really cool. And uh, I will be doing another 9 p.m. because uh, you guys are, uh, are awake. <laughs> so um, the best time to trade, you tell me. What session? What session? Don't be shy now. I was bragging on you. Hey, <laughs> Kinesis, can, can London. Okay. Ruthie, London session. Hey, Ruthie, how you doing? Okay. All right. Let's and the envelope, please. Oh, Toomey. Toomey has been in my classes. <laughs> Doing great, Ruthie. Glad to have you aboard. Norm, another. Uh, nice to see you too, man. Norm, P Pennsylvania, Norm, right? Norm, yeah. And the envelope, please. Cool, cool. We'd be happy for you to be here too. And boom. And the winner is. For the best trading session is the London session, 3 a.m. to uh, uh, 3 a.m. EST to 1130. Now, I'm going to put a caveat on that. I'm going to give props to the, to the overlap, right? Yeah. You get that overlap between London and, and New York. So, I, uh, so whoever said that, let me scroll up and see who, 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 who said that. Norm, yeah, and, and Ruthie and Kinetic, good. Okay, awesome. Now, this is now. Now, here is the here's a graph of volume uh, taken from a brokerage. <laughs> Notice how the London session and volatility in euro dwarfs New York. This is the a chart of the of the euro, and you can see that here is the London session. Okay, Mohammed, great to have you in the room. And so you've got this. You see, you see this overlap right here with this green and yellow? I don't know if you can make it out. I don't know if it's too small or coming in. But look at all that. Okay. In fact, uh, when I did trade, I had an office in Long Beach. We traded. And uh, I would make all my pips. I could make in, in the first hour of the London session. Mark says he has 30 minutes after London opens. Well, 9-ish Asia time. Depends on your strategy. Yeah. That, that, uh, that into Asia... Even the market open, when you get that market open, 30 minutes after the market open, yep, exactly. Opening range, breakout strategy, love that strategy. We'll talk about that. But you get that volume right in there, right? Now, once you get that big surge, and if you're an Elliott Titian or you know about anything about Elliott Wave, this is where your big wave three breakouts are going to occur, right? So it's almost like you can throw a dart at it, and you know, at, as long as you got your direction, you can scalp, scalp this like crazy. Now, um, now this also depends on, you got to check the economic calendar. That's a caveat. Check the economic calendar because if we've got something that went on in Asia, this may be lower. Or if there is something happening in London that's serious, or maybe like, a, like an NFP or something in New York, this may flatten out and you check the ATR. Oh, Dean, 
Hey, Dean. Okay, uh, can you guys hear? Am I? Uh, let me know in chat box if you can hear me. Type the letter Y. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, okay, why? Okay. All right, you might have to check something on your side. Okay. Okay, receiving? Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So you have to check, check the, AT, the ATR. ATR stands for average true range. And what you could do is, let me pull up, pull up a chart. Oh, okay, I, I heard, I heard it being somewhere. And here we go. Okay, it's, it's dark. Okay. All right. Wow, we broke, we broke the head and shoulders there. That was what I was looking for. Okay. And I was actually looking for, if this held, that was my line, and it broke that line. I think I, I took it short. If we can deal map. Yeah, I, I really bailed on my short early. But yeah, um, well, I'm going to put that indicator on. You go to, first of all, you want to go to a daily chart. This is a C Trader, and I'm kind of maybe pushing this a little bit. I it, it, I have a lot of things running in the background, and we're going to go to a daily chart. And you might and there's different plugins. Sometimes you can get a plugin that has an ATR indicator built in. Okay, so. So our that was our, our head and shoulders. Either we broke it or it came down, and we actually broke it and closed below the neckline on the daily chart. So this is bear. So this is invalid. Okay. <laughs> but we have a line. A 118.38 was a break above the shoulder would make a failed pattern, and we broke below the neckline. But um, Let's go to indicators, and I'll show you where it is. On C Trader, um, we go to it's under volatility, and it's also under we got vol volatility, and go uh, average true range, okay, on daily chart, and that will tell you how many pips per day, okay. So use a 14 period ATR, and um, make it a little bit thicker here, and click OK. And the ATR is going to tell you a whole lot about what's left, how much gas is left in the tank. Okay. Now, you probably say, wow, well, I don't know how to read this, Greg. Okay. Well, it's four, you know, there's four digits here for the euro, 1.1627, right? So you go to the last four digits, one, two, three, four. So about 78 pips is the ATR, 78. So what you want to look at is look at what's, how many pips has this moved for the day, okay? And then you, let's say this thing is only from the opening um, at uh, midnight GMT or actually for 5, 5 p.m. Look after 5 p.m. and see how many pips we've moved after 5 p.m. And if we move less than 78, there's probably a lot more. The moment you go like 25%, uh, over 25%, of the ATR, you're probably going to get a flat choppy move. But let's say it has like 100 ATR, and but when you looked at it, it only moved 20 pips, okay? That's a candidate that's going to break, should break out, and, you know. So, but if you find um, the ATR is 100 and it's moved 90 pips, that's not something you want to trade, okay? That, that's, a, that's for if you're day trading, okay? Because you missed the move. It's already moved 90 pips. The, the ATR is 100, and um, so there's, you know, there's 10 pips left in the tank. Okay. Now, you could exceed that, but ordinarily, the ATR is a 14-day average of how many pips per day it has moved. So if it hasn't moved that many pips, you can find something that's 
has a low, low, we call low vol, low volatility, not low volume, but low vol, and it goes from low vol to high vol. Now, I hope I didn't confuse you. Does that, does that under, does that help you? Does that help anybody? ATR. I didn't include this in the slide. It just dawned on me that this is something that I should include on the, ne the next time I do this presentation. Okay. But you want to look for, uh, so when you see high volatility, you can see this has moved a lot. So guess what? Not much left in the tank, and that's why New York and Tokyo sessions are flat, right? And you there? You guys there? Let me know because sometimes this screen will freeze up on me, and I'm, uh, I don't know if you guys still, can still hear me or not. Okay. Now, uh, going back to our to the slides here, we have to, the the London session dwarfs. Okay, all good, good. Okay. Now, you know, the overlap in London beats out only the overlap of London and New York beats out London itself. Okay. So it has a combination because usually the direction. Another thing too, another secret little clue, little hint, is usually the direction that it takes. And Mark probably knows too that once it London sets price action, it sets direction. Very rarely does New York, if something breaks out north in London, usually New York continues. It usually continues. Okay. Very rarely does a breakout in London reverse completely in New York. It may retrace, but it usually doesn't go back into the opening range. And that's a good sign because you can like, if you wake up and you miss London session and you see, oh, there's New York session. I see, okay, the high of the day was like 131.00, and now we're at the 129.85 in New York. Chances are that is going to continue down maybe to like going to 129.0 or to the next round number, hole number 129.50, okay, because of, the, of London, set, London set the high of the day, so um, we'll, we, uh, the New York continues it. Or London may be the low of the day. So if London broke up, then the London Open was like the low of the day, right? And so when New York comes on, you know, 31.50 goes to 32.10, and ATR is still got some pips left in that. That, vol that, that uh, momentum should continue in the direction of the London breakout. Okay. Uh, but let's uh, take a look. Let's show you. Okay. Ah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, do I have a chart? Yeah, Greg. Good job, Greg, from the future, or from the past. Good job. Okay. So here's our, we have our, here's an example of a breakout that happened minutes after the London session at 3 a.m. This just shows you uh, this, the amount of tips that you, you can get. So you, you've got this kind of Asia session, right? False breakout south side, right? And then we break back into the channel, and then it just continues, right? And this is 550, 610, 630. 7 a.m. lunchtime in the U.K., nice reversal at lunch, and then you know, we probably continued uh, on from there, okay? So that's an example of a, a breakout where you have compressions, like a spring being compressed, and then we have a breakout north, okay? And so let's go ahead and continue there, okay? So, the, so here are the best sessions to trade. This is another graphic to show you, you know, and it's that 8 Eastern time, 13 GMT, which is uh, what, 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 uh, 1, 1 p.m. Okay, you've got that overlap, okay? And that's where you're going to find the meat. So if you slept all the way through here, and this is a good time to, to, to attempt to trade, okay? So that's just for, for day trading. If you're day trading or scalping, this is uh, good stuff uh, uh, for you. In fact, sometimes I'll roll out of bed, I'll set an alarm to wake me up um, at 2.55 or 2.30 Eastern time. Then I'll wait for the breakout for like 3, like 3.30, 4 o'clock, and I'll just trade for a couple hours and go back to sleep and then wake up and, you know, I'll, I'll try to hit that session as well, right? Or this thing starts to retrace like lunchtime, I'll put buy stops above the, the high of that London breakout, okay, and I, I, can, I can show you that, okay. Now, while Asian Pacific Rim currencies like dollar yen and Aussie dollar dominate the Tokyo session, Euro dollar and uh, cable, they're going to reign supreme during the London session. You're going to find, you know, um, the cable is going to be pretty dead during Asia, so 
the closest thing, you know, Forex is quote unquote a 24 hour market, right? But I tell you what, when it goes flat like that, it's, a, it's as good as closed. So when London opens, it's like the opening bell for, 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 for the European currencies, right? So now you've got your breakouts. So now you're going to take out, no, go up north, south. Sometimes it will, it will gyrate, okay? And so you, you want to be, uh, be careful of that. So you can see that during London, 23% is in the cable, 23% of, of volume. This is volume for, uh, for each uh, currency pair. Euro, of course, you know, the euro is the number one trading instrument, you know. Um, the uh, currency pair is euro dollar. You know, the current, the number one currency, 85% of all volume is generated by the U.S. dollar, okay. But when we pair it with the euro, the euro dollar, uh, or, or fiber is another nickname for <laughs> euro dollar. Get your fiber, right, 39%. So, and it's very liquid, and I like trading pretty liquid currency pairs. Uh, dollar yen, 17% during London, okay? And then the other currencies kind of like finish off the group, you know, very small uh, percentage moves. And we want to trade where there's a lot of volume. Um, Tokyo, dollar yen, 78%. I mean, if you're going to trade um, uh, during the Tokyo session, dollar yen is the, the go-to. Uh, Euro has a lot of volume, 15%. But I tell you, I love Aussie and New Zealand. I, um, you know, I... I just love that currency. I've made so much money just trading the Aussie and the, and the Kiwi that it's a, a pretty cool uh, um, thing to do. Um, so even though it doesn't make up a whole lot, sometimes those illiquid, it's almost like the stock market where we have those penny, penny stocks that kind of like go up really big because the, the float's so small that when people jump into it, it moves. And currencies are kind of like that too. Sometimes when you go for the exotics, you can get pretty big moves. I know I have a student named Adina. She loves trading like EuroCAD and uh, you know pound Kiwi, pound you know pound New Zealand, and so you will get these really violent moves. So it's almost like uh, the the market moves into the the cross rates first, and then once those cross rates start moving, then it moves into the majors. So you may want to uh, look at that if you're trading Euro dollar. You want to trade. Uh, sometimes you'll get your bigger bigger, faster move in your Euro Yen, Euro CAD, okay? Um, so we go, it goes from cross rates, get, you know, you know like a Euro CAD, Euro, it might, like for instance, Euro CAD start tanking, and then Euro dollar tanks too, right? That's what we saw during the ECB, we had that ECB announcement today. Um, let's, uh, let's keep going, I'll show you some more, more interesting statistics, okay? So, now, if you want to know, like, when these are, and you really should, like, print this out or take a screenshot of it, and, um, you, know, you know, when did the stock markets open? Because at the stock market openings, you're going to find, if you are going to trade Asia, that's going to, you're going to find a lot of liquidity in the first hour, in the first couple hours, uh, you know, first, uh, first uh, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes to two hours of trading, okay? Then after that, it kind of tapers off. So you might be like, oh, wow, I scored 20 pips on this. Okay, take it and wait <laughs> because you're probably not going to, you'll wind up giving it back if you try to get back in it again, right? Because everything kind of dies out. Um, so um, uh, New York Exchange, 9.30 to uh, like 4 p.m., right? Um, so 9.30 and then uh, the t that's like 1 p.m. Uh, GMT, Tokyo Stock Exchange. Um, they have two sessions. One session, the, the first session, they break for a lunch. And then they also, and they continue from 1230 to, to, to uh, 50. So toward that close, you're getting the, uh, Tokyo and London overlap. And there is good volume there, too. Just, you know, the 130, that's 1230 to uh, 15. Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, pretty, yeah, that, that close, when we get toward the close, of, uh, which is closer to the open of London Stock Exchange. So 8 a.m. to 16.30, right, 4.30, London Stock Market, right? Uh, that's like 3 a.m. our time, okay? Um, so these are all in 24-hour time formats. I'm sorry, okay? So you have to convert these to your local time zone. But uh, I, I have, like, clocks, um, I don't know if they're there. No, I I have 
blocks on the top that actually keep track of those exchanges. Okay, uh, you get the Frankfurt stock market that opens up a little bit before. Yeah, those are in GMT. Uh, except for this one, World Stock Exchange opening times in, in 24-hour format. Yeah, these are in their local. These are in their in their local times. They're not GMT. I'm sorry. Okay, I, I there should be a better a better chart than that. Okay, that's in their local times. Okay, um, so here now. Here's a during Asia. This is a, a table for Asia session of PIP ranges for major currency pairs. It might be a little bit dated. I think it's like maybe 2014 or something like that. Um, I uh, do not find any more recent data, but the euro during Tokyo is like they say 56 pips. Okay, um, and um, uh, pound is like 54, dollar yen 30, Aussie dollar 65, Kiwi dollar 58 pips. Dollar cat. Uh, and you can see the Aussie and Kiwi, lot of big big pit movement. You know, even though it's not a lot of volume being traded, it does move pretty fast. Um, dollar cat thirty nine, dollar Swiss forty, euro yen fifty seven, pound yen. Anyone any dragon riders out there? Any pound yen traders? Pound yen, Aussie yen. That yen is like wasabi. You know, it's pretty spicy. Any it'll take any of the other currencies. You match up a yen with that. And you can get some pretty good moves. Euro pound, very small moves. Um, now, the thing about it, you're not going to get probably killed if you're in the wrong direction on Euro pound. In fact, there was a, a program back in the day called Fab Turbo, and that's what it did. It played the volatility of Euro pound and Euro Swiss because they moved so small, you know, getting stopped out or getting um, taken out by them is very unlikely. Okay. Um, so, so, so trading opportunities can be found during the Tokyo session, uh, particularly in the yen pairs, but it can be hit and, hit and miss at times. So you want to maybe focus on these. And some people say, oh, I'm a pound dollar trader, I'm a pound. And then you try to trade pound dollar at a friend, 28 standard lots on a Sunday, okay? And like going, 28 standards on a Sunday and pound dollar, oh my goodness, major slippage. Can you say slippage, you know? And he was real angry, and he had, you know, he was at a, you know, I would be angry too because you put your order in and you get filled way out because it was like, hey, there's no banks in London open up to deal in pound dollar and cable, so he got slipped. So that was you know, several thousand dollars. Um, so um, if you're, you know, you know, if you're trading a 10k or 1k or 5k mini, um, a micro lot or mini, mini lot, it's not probably not gonna be a whole lot, uh, but. It pays. In the, sometimes those spreads get wide, and there's slippage. So that's one of the reasons why you want to pick a liquid currency pair that's active during these times, because a lot of funky things, a lot of price manipulation can occur as well. Okay. Um, now, now if there is a big U.S. or European news due out later in the day, the Tokyo session could be very flat as traders wait the outcome and don't want to be caught on the wrong side of the news. So you can end up like this guy here. You know, you start off here and then you look like this because you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay. Any, anybody experienced that? So if you can, um, unless there's a big announcement, you want to check the calendar. And if there's nothing on the calendar in Asia, get some sleep. You know. Um, now this, now the best times to trade, you know, trading just two-hour window during the London New York session overlap can generate more profit opportunities than the other 20 hours before the market combined. In fact, probably about 70% of the volume happens in the first hour of London, which is crazy. You know, it's like, you know, I went to my drove to the office. Turn on my computers, I have five monitors, turn on the coffee machine, play some music, sit at the computer, all of a sudden break out, press the button, made 40 pips in like 30 minutes, you know, and like, okay, well, I'm done, you know, I mean, I hit my target and I'm not going to get it back, you know, and I'm sleepy, so turn everything back off, turn off the monitors, you know, put the, put the coffee back, get back in the car, drive back home, wife goes, what happened, you blew up the account, like, no, I made money. He's <laughs> like, you have so much faith in you, right? Um, but, um, you know, because she never, you know, usually if, if I'm going to the office to trade, I'm gone for like, and I don't come back to like, you know, New York, uh, New, you know, New York lunch. You know, I'm, but uh, 
that I hit that that fast. I'm like, no, I'm not giving that back, and I'm going to um, uh, go back to sleep. Okay. So that's, you know, but so you get a lot of, that can happen during London. And let me, and let me know in the chat box if you had that happen. You made, you made 40, 50 pips maybe in just one minute, you know, or, or, or 30 minutes. Okay. So, again, it leaves more time for sleep. Okay. Now, um, now, yes, you can trade for like Sunday through Friday. However, some days are better than other days. Okay. I know I talked a lot about sessions and day trading, right? But, um. This is some data, um, the best days of the week to trade for Um And I actually had a client, a uh, student, and uh, he was doing really well, except he was, you know, he would do well at the, at the very end, but he would lose a lot in the very beginning. So we looked out, analyzed, and looked at his performance. We found out that most of his losses were happening in a certain day of the week, and I'll show you, okay? So you can see that Here's the euro, and on Sunday, you know, there's about 69 pips available. Monday, 109. But look at Tuesday. Look at Wednesday. Look at Thursday. Look at Friday. Which day of the week would you like to trade? You tell me in the chat box. Who wants to trade Sunday? Raise your hand. It's a Sabbath, and you really should like go to church or something on Sunday, or <laughs> take a break. Tell me what day you want to trade. Tumi says Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. <laughs> Mark says Sunday sounds good. <laughs> Bob says Thursday. Yeah, I love Thursdays. Oh my goodness. TWT, hey! That's like a new trading system, Dean, you created. The TWT system. Yeah. Now, this thing, if you had a robot, and that's one thing I uh, you know been under development that I have going on is if we could take T the TWT Dean and just have the EA just come on during those three days, you now how much improvement and how much money um, would we make only trading high probability days? Look at pound yen, two thirteen on a Tuesday, one seventy nine on a Wednesday, Thursday two seventy. Now. Now, Friday could be hit and miss, but, you know, if you're in the non-farm payroll, you know, it could be uh, pretty, pretty sketchy. But exactly, okay? How many people you knew this? Is this new information for you or this old, like, okay, Greg, there you go. Boring, Greg. Let me, let me know. Is this stuff good? Is this helping you? Is this helping anybody so far? So I, should I go on? <laughs> Crickets. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sad. No, no, I'm happy. Good review. Good review. Okay, Muhammad, new for me. Hope it will help me. All right. Yeah, yeah. Kind of knew this, but the figures make more justification. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You may have had this in the back of your head. Um, I tell you that you know, it's funny. Um, your name is Mark because they're um, Mark, and he is a famous trader. And I have his book right here. And he did the same thing to a. He analyzed someone's trading, he was coaching, and he says, dude, you make so much money on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Stop tra trading Mondays. Stop, stop trading on Fridays. Just cut it. Because, well, this is what happened to me, okay? I'm a, I'm a market junkie, you guys know. I just love scalping. I love, I mean, two, I mean, 5A, 5P, I'm there. And wrong. Because what happened is I'm losing on Sunday. You know, I get whipsawed. Thing goes up, gaps up, gaps down. Oh, okay. Then Monday. Oh, it's, it's wanky, right? Manic Monday. Markets usually take one direction. Prof, you know, goes in one direction. Tuesday is a true direction because the volume comes back into the market, and that's where the true direction comes in. So you'll find I call the manic Monday or the Monday fake out, and then you get the you know, you get the you get the, you get the your turnaround Tuesday. Okay, turnaround Tuesday. So meanwhile, I've lost Sunday. 20, 30 pips. I lost Monday, 20, 30 pips. And now, Tuesday I win. Now, I got, I'm making up losses for two days. Tuesday I'm winning, Wednesday I'm winning, Thursday I'm winning, and then Friday I jump back in, and um, I'm giving that back in. So now I'm at break even for the week. Okay. Now, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again, expecting different results. So finally I said, you know what? 
Sunday, hey, I'm in church anyway, and I'm watching books, and I'm watching sports, and I'm playing out my family. And Monday, hey, I'm trying to get everything, get ready for the week with the kids and, the, and stuff like that. Tuesday, I come in, and I make more money for three days than trying to trade all seven days of the market. I think I'm going to make a million dollars in a, in, in a week by trading every single day. And it doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? You have to pick your battles, and you want to fight. When it's your at when you have the advantage, you have to have the advantage. Okay, all right. I can't keep going. Like this up. This is my uh, this is my calendar. Okay, and you probably how many people you saw my interview with uh, Sean Overton about the peanut butter jelly sandwich. You know, and I said uh, forex market or trading is like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? That for so pretend this is a piece of bread, right? With the because when I was a kid, I hated the crust. Okay. I hated the crust. Oh, my goodness, right? So what I would do, and thank you, Ruthie. Keep posting your, put your questions in the box. That way you won't forget them. And then when we get to the Q&A, I'm going to hit them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your questions, okay? So you've got the, the week of non-farm payroll. Usually it's sideways action. You know, maybe you're picking up 5, 10 pips, right? And then you get that breakout on Friday, right? And then you try to come in, and you're losing money on your Sunday, Monday again. And, you know... Because what's going to happen is monthly, you're on a new month, you have new monthly pivots, you're going to have new, all kinds of indicators that traders are looking at to be established first before they place trades. That's why volumes are low during that first week. Non-farm people usually determines the direction of the dollar. The dollar is 85% of the market. So that explains why you have low, very low volatility in the first week. Okay, so awesome. Often, I'll skip that first week. Okay, and then you know, I'm then I'm coming here hard in the sweet spot. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Friday, I made enough money. Hey, I'm kicking back. You know, Friday got my four day weekend, and a lot of Nasdaq traders take four day weekends because I went to New York and I was going to go on a tour, and uh, my daughter's ice skating teacher's brother works at the Nasdaq, and so he he was going to give us a tour, but he says, you know, they're gone. You know, they got the B team. The A team is like, you know, the top traders. The B team is like, hey, hey, give me a cup of coffee and don't touch anything until I get back next week, right? So nothing, everything stays in the range, right? So um, now the next thing, uh, okay, you get the sweet spot. So you got basically nine really great days to trade. That last week, well, how about the last week, Greg? Well, you have month in institution squaring books. And what this means is, they're going to take their, uh, you have, they have made their money the first, first three weeks, or last, these, these middle three weeks. They get paid a performance bonus, you know, based on the end of the month. If they've made money these three weeks, they are not going to get it back, taking a chance, you know, um, for this last week. So you're going to find this week to be very choppy, and you probably look at your, if you look closely at your losses uh, in your, you know, pull up your account statement and look at that last week, of any month, and that's probably where a lot of your losses are taking place too. Okay, so just forget that that last week, you know, and pull that off your calendar. So basically, I'm eating the, the soft, mushy middle where all the jelly and peanut butter is, and I'm getting rid of that crust. I know it's hard to do because we're market junkies. We want to trade. You know, look, you're here at, t at 10 p.m. watching me, or you know, so that's probably um, so. We want to trade, but we have to ex use a little bit of discipline. Just try it. Try it. Don't believe. Don't believe me. Don't believe a word I say. Don't believe a word I say. Take, do an experiment, and do it, and try it, and tell me, and email me at greg at elitetradersu dot com, and tell me uh, the difference in your trading. Because many of you are great traders, you're just trading at the wrong time. Okay. So you're only left the nine good the days uh, for good liquidity per month. Okay. And I gotta keep going. Um, I'm, I'm behind schedule, but uh, so trade. If you trade only London, New York overlap, and now you're at 18 hours of trading per month, really 18 hours. But you can make a fortune in 18 hours, all right? But you can give it back if you trade more. Okay. So, so it's, it's your choice. You can be a highly caffeinated trader junkie losing money during times and days not good for trading, right? Or you know you can um, you can take it easy and trade during the best times and kick back like this guy, right? Uh, because remember, 
you know, you, many of you have already done, if I say 10%, you have done 10% before. Many of you have already done 20%. Some of you have done 100%, 200%. Let me know in the chat box if you have. You guys are, many of you are not amateur traders. You know why? Because I know you're on my list. <laughs> many of you, but the thing about it is you make it and you give it back. And our next topic we're going to talk about next week is consistency. But um, the best time to trade, the people say time, you've heard the old saying, time is money, right? And it's really not time is money, but timing, timing is money, okay? So we want to know what, what timing is. And apparently I didn't have the, the other slides, but there's also a season, the seasonal bias I want to tell you about is they always tell you to, what, what, what do you do in May? They always say to traders, blank in May and what? You guys heard the old mar uh, timing. And this is, I'm going to summarize those slides that should be in this presentation really quickly. All right. Well, I'll just tell you, and to save time. It was like, sell in May and go away. Have you heard that? Now, this year is different. We have a new president, and the market just loves him. Okay? Uh, the currency market is still acting like that, kind of like sell in May. If you sold in May, and things are pretty choppy. And there's, um, I'm friends with Jeff Hirsch, who, uh, who writes the Trader's Almanac. And the statistics show that, and I don't have the chart right here, but most you know, your best times to trade are from October 31st. They never tell you when to come back. They say sell in May and go away, but they never tell you when to come back. And the little secret is come back October 31st. You come back Halloween, okay? So you're going to find that if you're getting chopped up in the market, the Forex market right now, it's going to be a lot better for you in the next three or four days, okay? Next week, you know, once you get past non-farm payroll, you're going to see some explosive breakout moves in your yen pairs, in the, in the dollar yen, dollar cad, dollar swift. It's going to be, wow, I'm a genius, right? But there's a trading bias that goes from October 31st to May, okay? And um, I wanted to, uh, ha I ran out of time. I was going to show you some more charts on that. But uh, we can, you know, if you, if you enjoy what we, we've talked, for, talked about, let me know in the chat box. And we'll go ahead and go right into the Q&A session. And uh, I want to be able to answer your questions that you had, okay? Um, and, and like I said, I had, uh, I've had i had several traders that all I had to do was just look at their, because a lot of times we don't want to look at our balance. We don't want to look at our statement because we've got some negative trades in there. And I mean, yours truly, I don't want to see the negatives. But those negatives will tell you a lot. They'll tell you if you're trading the wrong time or trading the wrong position size, um, you know, and once you can do an honest assessment of what you are doing, then you can, you can move forward. And that's why I want to invite you to a, a free strategy session with me. Um, if, if you like, you know, you don't have to. But if you want to, uh, to talk with me about, about your trades and, uh, and, uh, and we just can have like a little discussion, a little, little you know, mini coaching session, you know, no, no, you know, no sales call, no pressure. Just wanna, if you want to talk about, hey, what am I doing wrong, Greg? Can you can you help help me out? And sometimes, like I said, uh, uh, Tracy Anderson was one of my clients, and she came like second place in a concert, uh, not a concert, but in a global currency championship just by doing a 30-minute session with me. Okay, just a 30-minute session with me. So there's a link in the chat box where you can do that, and then we can just talk and say, like, hey, Greg, because you know what, he's a trader. Your dog doesn't want to hear about your trading. Your husband doesn't want to hear about your trading. Your boyfriend doesn't want to hear about your trading. Your, your wife doesn't care because you haven't bought her a ring or anything like that. They think it's an expensive hobby. So sometimes the only person you can talk to is nobody. So I want to make myself available to you. And, uh, you know, again, can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, good, good. Let me go back to the question. Okay, Ruthie, what do you suggest for Terry that looks at eight to four job? I do wake up for London session and come home on my lunch break to check the markets. Okay, eight to four. Uh, uh, are you, um, where are you located? Are you, are you, on the, are you in, the, in the U.S.? Are you in the West Coast? He's, 
Oh, Pennsylvania. Oh, you're down the street from a norm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What you now? What you can do is like you can set uh, like an opening range breakout. If you know the direction in London, you can kind of like set buy stops and sell stops. You know, and um, look at look at a big mark like a big market uh, dynamic there and set stop. Look, I have a trader. Uh, I have done it too, where okay, we've got something like this. I'm I'm not buying this because we've broken, we've closed, and so now what am I going to do now? I'm going to drill down. I'm going to drill down to a smaller time frame chart. I'm going to maybe drill down to a four hour chart. Okay, and I'm a little bit of a doji there, so we might have a little profit take in there. What I doji and one of the things I like doing with with these dojis. And um, I wrote an article about it a while ago. Is I will take the high and low of the four-hour doji because we have like, like a compression, price compression. That's a range right there on a smaller time frame chart. If you go down to a 15 or five, that's a long, that's a long range of 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 candles. In fact, we can scroll down and look at that. And what I'll do is I'll create a range and I'll look for a range breakout. Okay, um, and if I want to scalp. Now, this looks like a huge, what we call a big impulse move, a wave three, and that's kind of ties in with Mark, okay, where uh, we got this kind of like this huge kind of rangy kind of thing here. And let me, uh, okay. Uh, let me. Okay, yeah, so we got this kind of a, a big impulse move. Usually after a big move, we have some price retracement, okay? We're going to see price retrace maybe from that 116.30 area, and we want to initiate shorts. We want to look for a shorting opportunity um, here, okay? Now, shorting below that may not be very, um, very cool, right? Because, oh, and my little chart disappeared, okay? Okay. Um, so we want there's a there's a Fibonacci zone called the 618, okay, the 61 percent retracement. Usually, okay. Mm, well, I think I, uh, this this whole multimedia thing is kind of like, oh, uh, computers like going, oh, Greg, what are you doing to me? Yeah. Okay, I would draw a fib from the top of that. It, it, it should be. Mohammed says it's pause. I don't think it is. Uh, let me know. I'm moving my cursor. Can you see it? Okay, cool. Yeah. So there are tip, uh, and I talked about this in, uh, in in mentorship, where we have these reversal zones. These are reversal zones in price. Come on back. And usually the 618 is a typical zone. So after a big move, you can't see, you can't see my screen? Okay. It, it's white, it's loading. And, oh, maybe I need to, okay, stop. And let me play. And choose it again. Okay, good now. Okay, good. Okay. So this is... Now this is not uh, the ECB rate announcement, okay? And this this is what I did on this, okay? Like I took some small hits, small hits, small, but this one is where the big run is. And I'm going to show you that this is C Trader. And uh, so what we did was we took a we t I took a fib down to this double bottom right there. And we had, notice how this 618 FIBO triggered, okay? And notice where I got short. I got short right at that, at, at that, at that, at that FIBO. When we broke below that FIBO, I got short. Okay. Now, he's just saying, okay, Greg, how does that help me? And Ruth is 
this question. You can set sell stops where you see price rallying up to the 618, okay? And maybe this took hours to get up in here, right? So if you put a sell stop, and this is how you would do that. Um, on CTRA, you right-click the chart. And I can't put a sell stop because price has moved beyond the market. But I, I can use a sell limit. I'm going to show you as an example, okay? But you will use a sell stop, okay? So sell stop, and I should get a window of some... Um, Oh, show positions, maybe? Yeah, positions, okay. And I've got the multimedia, e-signal, and probably need some more memory, probably, yeah, this is uh, working a little slower than, I apologize. But um, when you set that sell stop, you have a significant area, and then when price triggers it, it's like a rabbit crossing a, you know, not that I, I trap rabbits, but you have that little trip wire, right? And the, the trip wire get, you know, when the rabbit crosses the trip wire, the trap snaps, right? So we have, I have a moving average. I have a 20-period uh, moving average, right? And actually, you know, it's a late entry because you could use the, here's the nine, here's the 618 right here. And I could have set a a sell stop. So while I was sleeping, price comes up, comes up, and boom, that candle broke below. I could be in that trade, right? And and then I can just set it for the the next. The, see, I set it for the next uh, the twenty three percent retracement. Uh, once I mean, I got up, got out very very fast, <laughs> right? And then a retrace. There's your retrace. Right. So let's say you're at work, and basically all you want to do, you just need two numbers, Ruthie. You just need two numbers. You need an entry number, which is a, a significant fib, and you need a um, a take profit number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I recommend trying the demo to get comfortable with it, you know, and that way you can, uh, you know, get used to because a lot of times we're control I'm a control freak I like control, seeing everything controlling everything but I when I did this trade I was asleep I didn't wake up I wasn't up at I'm sorry I was asleep so um, I woke up and um, oh wow I'm up and then I go look at and I figure I'm not at 1770 and I'm looking at the price is down to you know 1775 it starts retracing so um and it, when it broke that low, I got in again. When it broke the uh, that eleven that eleven point four percent fibo, which I and it kept going. And I could have trailed my stop up to break even. Yeah. And don't worry, you you'll you'll get it definitely with more practice. It's a skill set that when you learn it, and you notice I have my moving average, that twenty period moving average, and every time it goes up to the twenty moving average, I could have got. But I had to take the, I had to take, uh, go up to the school. I went to the church and did some volunteer work, so I wasn't here. Um, but here we got a nice little retrace up to there. Another area to get to get in. Look at that tag. If tags are it, you, you can get in short it again, short again. Oh, Dean, gotta go. You're welcome, Dean. Thanks for showing up, buddy. Let me know if you have any questions. Email me. Uh, let me put my uh, thing there in the chat box. Greg, G R E G at spell your name right, Greg. Elite Trader Trader Traders U dot com. All right, but I had that. Okay, so yeah, you can you know, email me with questions. You're, you're my group. You know, you're my on my list. And again, tomorrow, next week, next Thursday, we're gonna have another lesson and another lesson. So cool. You bring your questions, and uh, that'll help you out. So. Um, again, now we broke these fibs, and um, now I think the, we're going to talk about consistency. So I'm going to show you how like to actually set these stops and limits. And I have a little simulator, a little forex simulator. We can do it together, and you actually can see it in real time. So tell a friend, and uh, and uh, we can we can do that. That you know I don't have a, enough time to really cover this, but um, definitely um, I will. Uh, be able to cover this for you.
and help you out, Ruthie. Okay. And I asked another question. Um, okay. Great question. To be answered later, do you use Elliott Wave in your strategy? Oh, do I look? <laughs> I love Elliott Wave. I love Elliott Wave. Um, I have my own take on it. Okay. Um, here is, uh, if you give me, uh, here is, um, well, I have pivots. I got all kinds of stuff going on in this one. I have, uh, let me go back. Let me, uh, shut these off. Because this is turning, it looks like a porcupine. And it, it's, it, it's going to be a lot simpler than that. Okay. So let me edit chart. Um, yeah, I, I paid about 4000 bucks for, for this, but, uh, you know, um, I'm going to turn off my pivots and, uh, yeah, but I do use, I, I do use Elliott Wave and um, if you give me a request, you know, we can do something. No one asked me about that. I couldn't believe that. I'm like going, wow, I can't believe it. In that survey, no one put down the uh, Elliott Wave. Okay. But um, but there there's a clean Elliott Wave chart there and I can expand it, maximize it, right? And basically, Elliott Wave is a five-wave expansion of price. There's your one, two, three. So this is Pound Kiwi. We expect a pullback to one uh, to maybe some type of Fibonacci support, and that's when we look for targeting our entries there. I know, Norm, are you still in the room, Norm? I know Norm had a question. I get, you know, I can't believe it. I just remember these questions from the, from people from from a while back. Like ah, I'm gonna, um. You're looking for that wave five, and that wave five usually happens on divergence, right? So that's your three, and you're looking for a pullback maybe to 18857, 188592, and we're looking for a pullback for, for from some type of an extension, and this thing kind of does extensions. It's called advanced get. Um, it was four thousand. I paid four thousand dollars back in 2011. <laughs> um, I can do Elliott Wave by hand cheaper, <laughs> and that's one of the things I teach my group. Um, but uh, I do, yes, I do. Okay. But uh, if any questions, feel free to email me if you want. Again, you want a strategy session with me? Um, you know, feel free to to sign up. No obligation. Um, I can analyze your trading and recommend maybe some tools or some services or things if you need that. Usually, sometimes just talking uh, will just straighten you out and you do really well, okay? So um, with that, I'm going to sign off. I want to thank you so much for being part of the webinar, and uh, happy pipping to you. God bless, and cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. Oh, wow, I didn't record this. Nice. Great, great job, Greg. Hey, guys. You want to catch the next big Forex move? Then make sure you stay in touch with us via social media. You can follow me on Twitter, Greg McLeod, that's M-C-L-E-O-D, Trader, T-R-A-D-R, on Twitter. You can also join our distribution list at www.elitetradersuniversity.com. You can also join my free Pip and Run group on Facebook. And make sure you check out my YouTube channel for my latest scalping videos, Gregory McLeod Trader. Make sure you give us a like, a thumbs up, and share, and also subscribe. Be a subscriber so you can be alerted of my next videos. You can also connect with me via Instagram, simply pip and run. Or you can just reach out to me via email, greg at elitetradersu.com. Look forward to hearing from you and have a great day. Happy pipping. Cheers.